This is Saxon Advanced Math, Lesson 101B for 3x3 Determinants. I also have on the book on the board here 103C or 101C, which is Determinant Solutions of a 3x3, and 101D, which is Independent Systems or Non and, and uh, uh, Non-Parallel Systems. So let's go ahead and start first of all on a 3x3 matrix. And I this only works, and, and I'm jumping right from 101B to 101C because they're showing you in 101B. Uh, how to do this, except they don't give you the example. For me, learning the way I do, and for uh, uh, what I found a lot of people do, is they learn by seeing and by doing. And so uh, the, the, us just st stating the facts doesn't really help us. We want to see it done. So we're going to look at 101C, and I'll explain uh, the steps that 101B uh, accomplished in 101C as well. Now, so this is a three by three determinant. And here we have a system of three equations. They're three linear equations, it's very important. And if I look at it, this one had the x, y, z. Of course, this is uh, coordinates in three dimensional space. And, and so we have an x coordinate, a y coordinate, a z coordinate, letting us know exactly where that, that, that three dimensional object sits, right? Or that three dimensional line passes through. And what we're looking is for the intersection of those three. Now, we've already introduced this way back earlier in the book. And when we did so, we had to solve this by saying, well, I can eliminate these two or substitute with these two, eliminate or substitute with these two, come up with an answer, and then uh, uh, eliminate or substitute with that answer, and then come up with one variable, and then work our way all the way back. And that was useful. However, a three by three matrix is a lot faster and a lot quicker as far as the accuracy goes. Now. The book has a big warning in there. Do this with a friend or do this with a partner. And the reason being is, is something about when we're adding, uh, or multiplying, adding, multiplying, adding, multiplying, adding, it's very easy for us to forget which one we're doing in which order and to add, add, then multiply, multiply instead. And so when we're working with these, if you're very careful, they're not terribly hard. And I'll show you how to do them, but you'll have to just be careful when doing so. And they're, because they will give you an answer very quickly, but unlike elimination or substitution, which you're logicking your way through the whole thing, this one is just a repeated operation. And it's sometimes easy to put our mind on copilot. So let's look at how we would write the three by three matrix first. Notice that these are, this is called a coefficient matrix. And remember that in Kramer's rule, we would, in the denominator, we'll put the X, Y, and Z uh, coefficients all in order. So I'm gonna start with that. So I'm gonna say two, one, three, right? Two, one, three. One, one, negative one. There's that one. And then two, negative one, two. Two, negative one, two. Now, a couple of points that I'm gonna make. I'm gonna start with my denominator because the denominator is gonna be the same for X, Y, and Z. So there's lots of us to figure that out first and then we'll have to rewrite it. The second thing is keeping your rows and your columns lined up is extremely important. You have to be able to visualize what you're doing. So if you don't have those lines and rows lined up, if you don't have them perfect, it's really easy to get confused where you're at. So this is where uh, your penmanship and your, your attention to the detail really come in play because it's very easy to get confused on where you're at in the problem otherwise. So let's start here first of all. I'm gonna go down with like Kramer's rule, two times one times two. Now in a two by two matrix, I would've just said two times one minus one times one, right? And I've been done. We're gonna do that same idea, but we're going to take it one step further and pretend like it doesn't make a difference which order they're in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, two times one times two, and then we're gonna to jump to the next column over here, okay? And say one, right, times negative one, but I need a third one down here. This third one down here is this three, because I went boom, 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 okay? If this column over here was written over here, which it could have been just as well, because it, it, you know, it didn't matter which order we're, we're, we're going in here, right? X, Y, Z, it could have been Z, Y, X, and, and different variables, it would have made a difference. So because of that, I, I have to be able to say two, one, two, plus one, negative one, three, plus two, one, negative one. So now I'm gonna go ahead and multiply this up. So two times one times two is four, one times negative one, times uh, positive three is negative three, and then two times one times negative one, negative two. That's just the addition side. Then we're gonna start down here, we're gonna do subtraction. Minus, and we're gonna go the, uh, the same way, same thing, going the other way. So in other words, instead of saying two times one minus one times two, or one times one, which would have been just you're, you're done, we're saying all the addition matrices, right directions, uh, minus all the subtraction ones. 
So we're going to go the other way. So 3 times 1 times 2. 3, 1, 2. Okay, plus negative 1, negative 1, 2. Negative 1, negative 1, 2. Okay, plus 2, right? 1, 1. Notice that I'm going in these arrows, and, and I hate to draw on this because it's going to look confusing, but I'm going down this way first, right? And then down, and then jumping back up. And then, all right, and then down and jumping back up for these two. And then I'm going this way, and I'm saying going up, going up, jumping over to this one, going here, and these two. Okay, and that gives us all of the, the, the uh, elements being used, and I therefore can say 3 times 1 times 2, which is 6. Negative 1 times negative 1 times 2 is 2. And then 2 times 1 times 1, which is 2. Now, when I do this, I'm going to add these up, 4 minus 1 minus uh, 4 minus 3 is 1, minus 2 is negative 1, 6 plus 2 plus 2 is 10, I subtract, I get negative 11. That's my denominator, and it's going to stay my denominator every single time. So I went ahead and put that in as my denominator each time, because it's going to stay the same. Next, I need to move up to the numerator, and on the numerator, I'm going to do the same exact operation, except when I'm solving for x, I use these three in the x elemental column. So this column here becomes 7, negative 2, 16, just like I would normally do in a 2-by-2 in a two two matrix. And, but then I move over to the y's, 1, 1, negative uh, 1, 1, negative 1, right? And then I've got 2, negative 1, and 2. And I'm missing a negative here. I apologize for that. Okay, so, and then when I go ahead and multiply these out, they are going, and I do the same thing, 7, 1, 2, right? 7, 1, 2, 14, okay? I can skip the steps if I just multiply down. 7, 1, 2, 14. 1, negative 1, 16. Negative 16. Okay? 2 times negative 2 times negative 1, right? And that's going to give me each one of these uh, uh, 4, which is going to give me each one of these elements. Then I can go 16 times 1 times 2, 32. Negative 1 times negative 1 times 7, 7. And then 2 times negative 2 times 1, negative 4. Now, when I do this, I use the subtraction in the middle. And if I, I'm skipping some steps, but you can see it, negative 33. Negative 33 over negative 11, right? Because that's my negative 33, negative 11. And that gives me 3 for the x value. Okay, this is, is simple because I'm going to repeat the same operation twice more. But I want you to notice something here. I'm going to jump down to the z. So remember, we're going to put the 7, negative 2, 16 in for the z column, and the other columns stay the same. And of course, the denominator still stays negative 11. But I want you to see, for me, using these extra parentheses doesn't make sense, because in my head, if I say I'm adding down, subtracting up, it works out. Now watch how I do this. 2, 1, 16. That's 32. 1, negative 2, 3. Plus a negative 6. 7, 1, negative 1, negative 7. Now I'm just going to subtract each one of these as I go up. So minus 3 times 1 times 7, negative 21. Minus negative 1 times negative 2 times 2. Well, that would be a positive, but I'm subtracting, so it's subtracting 4. Minus 16, right? times 1 times 1. Now I can just do this, 32 minus 6 minus 7 minus 21 minus 4 minus 16, negative 22, negative 22 over negative 11, still the same denominator, equals 2. And I can solve these out very quickly by coming up with my x, y, and z values just by moving the coefficients on the uh, constants into the coefficient spot, spot for x, then for y, and then for z. And I don't have to go all the way back and rework the whole problem every time. My determinant stays the same, um, and I get the correct answer. Now, a couple of things we have to be careful for. First of all, what is an independent system? When we were working with our first part of this lesson, which is the first video, we talked about the fact that in order to solve it, it had to not be parallel, because a parallel system is dependent. So these are independent. These are two ways that I'm going to know that they're going to be independent systems. One, no row in the coefficient matrix is a product of a constant and the members of another row. Now what that means is this. You have to have as many variables or as many uh, uh, unique um, 
equations as you have variables. If you don't, you can't solve it. In other words, if I gave you an equation that had two variables in it, but only one equation, your best you can do is tell me the equation of the line in, in y equals mx plus b format. You can't go back and tell me this is exactly what x is and exactly what y is because as x changes, y changes. And so you have too many variables. But if you had two equations with two variables, it might be solvable if one of two things were true. They're unique equations and they're not parallel. That's all this is saying here. They have to be unique equations. So in other words, taking one equation and multiplying it by a constant gives me another equation, but it would reduce back to the same equation. Doesn't work. The other thing they're telling us is that, I, I, and that would tell me I only really had, if I'd have three variables, I only have really two unique equations and it's not solvable. The other thing that I'm looking at here is how do I know that's true? Well, if I solve 